Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Matrix. My name is E.T. I'm your host and we're here today to talk about the very, very best games, awesomest games, at least in my opinion, in the universe. And by that is just kind of a play on words. I'm talking about the universe as in space-themed games or science fiction-themed games. And uh, I'm going to uh, start with number 10, work my way to 1, and then I'm just going to talk about each game. And um, if you if, you guys can think about games that either I forgot or that you want to mention or that you think is awesome. Then, you know, put it down in the comments below. I would love that. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's start off with number 10. Okay. So Star Wars Rebellion, amazing game. If you've never played this before, um, it's an experience. If you're a Star Wars fan, you'll love it. And, and you could probably enjoy this game too, even if you're not a Star Wars fan. One player plays as the Empire, trying to find the secret rebel base. And of course, the other player is the Rebels, trying to, uh, avoid, elude the Empire. And the Empire wins if they put boots on the ground on the planet of the secret hidden base. And the, uh, Rebels win if they can score enough objective points, uh, showing that they've held off the Empire long enough to, uh, promote their cause. Um, I guess when they make Empire Strikes Back, the board game. Just kidding. Um, but this game is great because it takes on kind of all three of the first movie arcs uh, in it. And a lot of people call it Star Wars in a box. Although they do have expansions and you can play some of the, the newer Star Wars characters mixed in with it. But this game is kind of stressful for me. This game would probably be number three on my list of uh, space science fiction games. Except that the stress level is so high and the dice rolling is a little wonky. Now, I heard in the upgrade that they've improved the dice rolling content. So that may move it up later. But right now, if you ever get a chance to play it, I highly recommend it, Star Wars Rebellion. Yeah, so at number nine, Mission Red Planet. This is one of the earliest games I've ever played, and this is the either the second or newest edition or whatever, and it's really good. It's a simultaneous action. The whole object of the game is you're trying to, and it has kind of a steampunky sci-fi combination, and you're trying to basically area control parts on Mars or its moon or one of the moons, Phobos or whatever it's called, and it, you have everybody has the same like you know deck of nine cards or ten cards or whatever. And everybody selects one and they all have actions and then we reveal them and then it kicks off in order like a countdown. So whoever's like the first player would go 10, 9, 8. Oh, whoever has 8s would throw it up and then starting, you know, clockwise from the first player position, they will resolve, you know, it might be I'm going to load up this ship with two astronauts or I'm going to do this or I'm going to make one of the ships take off or I'm going to sabotage it. You know, each one has different numbers. And, you know, you might have cooler actions at the bottom of of the order so like you might be going later so maybe you can't put up the ship so you take a risk but sometimes they have better payoffs and it's just a fantastic game and you're collecting one of three resources from this planet and i've played this it's always been a success every time i've played it and it, and it fits right in my notch because i do like the simultaneous action selection when it's done right and it is done perfectly in this game it's collecting resources area control, and you know, you have these little uh, kind of secret things going on on the edge of the board that may or may not affect the game. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it, you know, it, it adds just enough what if to the game to make it, you know, like, oh, uh, somebody wants to be a sneaky player or whatever. But anyway, fantastic game. My number nine, Mission Red Planet. Okay, so this is my number eight game. Pulsar 2849. I hope I didn't invert the numbers. I do that sometimes. I, I think I'm number, numeral uh, dyslexic or, or something. But this game, when I first saw it, I'm like, man, this looks convoluted. The first time I, I saw like a, a even a video of it, somebody else playing it, I thought, I don't think this game's for me. But then one of my buddies got it. And we broke it out and started taking a look at it. And this is everything that I love in a game. First of all, it's space themed. You're trying to travel on this on this map on the board and trying to activate pulsars. But this is like a what they call like a point salad game. You can do that and or you can develop technologies. There's a whole tech tree of things that you can do. Uh, but the main meat of the thing is it's a dice, dice drafting game. So you have these dice and based upon and everybody's going to end up with like two dice and then you're going to use these dice to do things on the board. And there's even ways to modify your dice. So if you're a big fan of mitigation, it's it's in there. 
And it just, it is just so fun because it, it's, it's not like super overly thinky, but there's lots of choices to make. And I like games like that where, you know, um, it gives you those choices. Even when you make selections, there's two tracks. There's one called an engineering track and one, and based, and then one called the, you know, who goes in what player order kind of track. And if you, um, I think I got that right. But if, if you choose like a bigger die, you're, you're, you get bigger, more value for it, but you're going to be penalized on the track based upon what the median is at the time. And, and I'm not going to get into all that, but basically, so like if the median is four and I choose six, I have to choose one of my, um, positions to go back. So either I'm going to go further back into a turn, which can, you know, lead me to negative points or on the engineering track, which could get me no rewards, especially in a, you know, a three or four player game. Um, and the higher up, so I might take lesser numbers, to do smaller actions on the board, but it's what I need. But also I'll get all these bonuses because if I'm at the top of the engineering track each round, I'm going to get like two engineering cubes. And if you get enough of those, you can take extra actions and all kind of stuff. Fantastic game, uh, Pulsar 2884. Let's take a look at the next one. I've been a big fan of like Zombicide, right? So I, I thought, man, I love Zombicide, but sometimes it's time consuming. This is a a real time and 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 real time is not something I like usually. I don't like games usually with sand timers and real time effects or whatever. But this game is a cool game because basically you're just blasting the crap out of aliens. You set a timer for like two minutes and you just start going at it, right? You know, there's some objectives that you have to get, complete on the board, like you're you're going out and trying to get these aliens but based upon the dice you roll if you roll a bad thing you have to advance one of the aliens on the board somewhere coming towards your base or whatever whatever objective you've chosen and once that gets resolved then you can take the actions on your dice but you've got to do this in real time and your weapons certain types of weapons need certain types of symbols to trigger them but you just like are just blasting stuff right and left you're trying to move you can even search and find some better upgrades to your weapons or better weapons and it's just a really, really cool game, and it moves like this, and you can play two or three times, and you can kind of level the, the difficulty um, a, as you wish. Um, really fun game. If you like games like Zombicide or whatnot, like I did, but you want a fast experience, fast-paced, and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, some cooperative games, you get that person like the alpha gamer that's like, what should you do? See, you basically just regroup. So, like, you look at what the success was. Like, you may have certain ob objectives in your head as a team, but basically maybe things didn't go your way or maybe things went really well and then you kind of stop and go, okay, what were you doing over there? Okay, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll say, I'll try to do this. Are you going to try to do that? Okay, well, whatever. And then you just go and then you could change. doesn't matter because you don't have time for someone to go, hey, you should be doing that because they're just trying to concentrate on their dice. So, you know, fast paced, blowing up aliens, killing everything. If you just feel like killing stuff quickly, I highly recommend uh, Project Elite. Play it. My number six game, uh, Beyond the Sun. Um, this game is a little weird to me. Now, some people will go, well, it doesn't feel very science fiction-y. It's like, well, it's kind of true, but it's, it is science fiction-y. The, 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 the cool part of the game is most games like this, you'll play a big space board, right? And then you have a little tiny, like, you know, trek area, uh, tech area where, okay, I'm going to try to advance, you know, the little boards. Like, I'm going to move up that technology or I'm going to do that. That's on the sideboard or cards or whatever. This, it focuses on the tech. And then your sideboard is kind of like off in the distance. Yeah, we will get the space thing going on of trying to do area control with planets or clash with other players trying to do certain things. It's a really um, fun, I'd say medium to maybe slightly heavier than medium thinky game. Not too, not too crunchy, but crunchy just enough. And I've had a fantastic experience, whether I've won or got blown out. But I felt like I've been competitive in every game. If you like this type of, uh, especially tech tree building, um, like people that like Kemet, they may not like the area control part of that, but they like, they really love the tech tree, uh, the tech part of it, which is I think really cool in Kemet. Then you'll like this game, um, at least specifically for that, for the tech building. If you ever get a chance, you need to play this one too. This is Beyond the Sun. Number five, Star Wars Destiny. Now, this game is fun. I mean, I love Star Wars games. It's all about you're choosing two two to three characters, and your opponent's choosing two or three characters based upon how many, like a point pool. And, you know, I might have, 
you know, Han Solo and then like an elite guard, or you could actually probably play Han and Chewie, or you, you can have different characters in the game, or someone might be, you know, playing, you know, Vader or Kylo Ren, and then, you know, some sort of stormtrooper or main characters. But based upon the number of points, you can put in different iterations of those characters. Each characters have dice assigned to them. My object is to kill your two or more characters, and your object is to kill my two or more characters, you know, because they all have different life points or whatnot. But the whole thing is you have these dice on at the beginning of your turn, you're going to roll all your dice and you're going to kind of group them into like symbols. And if they have light burst symbols, it's melee damage. If they have blaster symbols, it's range damage. And on your turn, uh, and you also have a deck of cards that you get to build. So it's kind of customizable, which is really cool. Um, so based upon the characters you have and the cards you have in your hand, you can either like play a card from your hand that says like a, you know, free action. Basically you get one action on your turn. So I can play a card and it might also do something. I forgot what the keyword was, but it says get like, you know, let you gain another action. So some cards are cheap, let you, but it, but also as an action and the coolest part of the game is resolving the dice. So I can resolve one or more like symbols to do damage. So I might have a symbol that says two with a blaster symbol and another single blaster and combine them together and that does three damage and I'll go, I'll deal three damage to Kylo Ren. Or I might go, or somebody might go, oh, I've got, you know, uh, Vader's gonna, you know, they're gonna add all their lightsaber burst symbols together and deal four damage to one of my people from Darth Vader or whatever. And there's also indirect damage, which means you, the opponent gets to choose, but those are only three main types of damage. And you have a customizable deck that you can build and it is just really cool because all the different things you can gain wealth and then buy things and add items that also deal damage or do cool things in the game. And on your turn, you just get that one action and you, and, and you, and you just take, I take an action, you take an action, I take an action until both players consecutive to the class and it resolves. And then you, you know, you draw your hand up to whatever and then you just go again until somebody's dead or somebody runs out of cards, I believe. But a fantastic game. If you get a chance to play it, you can buy it real cheap online right now. The starter one with the, which was the mass market one with Kylo Ren and uh, Ray. Yeah, easy to find. Star Wars Destiny. Starship Samurai. <laughs> this is a fun game. I love area control. I look at this as kind of like a sci fi mini Blood Rage, sort of. Not really, but sort of. It's, um, it's cool because basically at the beginning you draft samurai, right? You know, which two, everybody gets two cool samurai and they have special abilities. They have a power to them. And when you have that, then everybody has the same support group, which is so many fighters, you know, and then like a bigger ship, um, you know, to help, you know, I forgot what it's called, the, the freight or whatever that lets you carry two fighters with you. And, based upon the number of players is how many boards you have. And that's how many plants you're trying to control. So on your turn, you know, you're trying to deploy people out to the, you know, these different spots and to control them to get the rewards into the turn. But there's also, you know, you have a deck of cards and I love games that combine multiple units and the combat's really simple. Basically starting with, I believe the attacking player, like you add up like, oh, the power of my samurai is there and my force adds up to this and your whole force adds up to that. And we both can play cards until, you know, both players have passed. Um, not necessarily consecutive, but just both players have passed. And then whoever has the most power wins the game. The equalizing mechanism in this combat is pretty cool because instead of you, um, you know, like most games like Blood Rage, it's like, you know, ha, I beat you, you're destroyed, you have to remove all your pieces. And this, you take the victory, like, aha, I've kind of conquered this area, and then you return home. But the other people will stay there in that spot to control whatever in that sector, whatever new planets found. So they already have their forces kind of deployed in that area. And so they'll have an advantage starting off, not having to spend actions to put them out and how you do your actions in this game. I may have messed up in the beginning if I didn't say so, but basically everybody has like these little discs and they say one, two, three, four. And then there's basically four different type of actions. One might be deploying your people. One will be, um, drawing cards, uh, I forgot all of them. One is gaining wealth, which is like currency you use in the game. And the cool thing is, that makes this cool is like, I might go, okay, I'm gonna deploy, you know, four power worth of units or whatever. But later on, it's like, okay, then I'm gonna get one wealth. I have a two and a three left over. I don't have to choose something else. I can actually put my token on a token I've already done before. So I'm like, I'm also gonna deploy some more and I'm gonna deploy my, you know, so you can, you know, mathematically you could deploy up to 10, you know, or 
um, if there's room, you know, sometimes the space can, the sectors can only hold so much, or I can just like, I'm going to spend this whole round. It's kind of risky, but I'm just going to get all wealth and cards this turn and hope, yeah, I'm going to give up what's on the board, but it's going to, I'm going to be set to really do some stuff. And that's a really interesting crux in the game, interesting problems to have, but it's really light, easy to learn. And it's fun. And that's the whole thing. And I love the little idea of having these uh, Starship Samurai miniatures on the board. Got to paint mine. They're really cool. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. So number three is basically Star Trek Mage Knight. <laughs> okay. This basically uses the Mage Knight system, but it uses Star Trek ships. Now, they do give you, I think, an extra card to make the game a little easier, like an extra captain's card, or, or you know, that fits. Um, and it, I don't know, I feel like they soften the rules a little bit compared to actual Mage Knight. Not much, <laughs> but enough where it, it feels a lot more accessible and easier for people to get into it. And maybe that was their intent from, you know, the iteration from originally when he built Mage Knight, because it is a, you know, a heavier game. And this is still by no means a non-heavy game. It's just that... It is softened a little bit to make it easier, maybe for the entrance of people who just love Star Trek, but they wanted to try this. I, I don't know. Um, I already played Mage Knight, which I love, but this is a space game. So basically, Space Mage Knight, heck yeah, give this to me. I'll play it all day. And if you don't know what Mage Knight is, and, and this, well, we'll just do the Star Trek since that's what I put on the list. But basically, you're using your, your ship, and you're just going out, and you're exploring you can do missions that are pvp with the person you're playing with or you can just do like a non-interference doing your own thing or you can do a cooperative and uh usually i play non-pvv non-pvp but competitive so we're both trying to get you know objectives get points and the, as you level up there's like an experience board as you gain renown then you'll get new abilities like you, you know you're your ship will become harder to destroy uh you'll get more things that you can do you'll be able to get more cool like uh, space technologies and stuff like that. And you can add crew to your ships, which is really cool. And they all have different abilities. And you're out blowing up Romulans, exploring Borg ships. Great game. If you get a chance to play it, or if you like Mage Knight and you like Star Trek, I highly recommend Star Trek Frontiers. Okay, so there's no surprise. Dune is a very popular game. Dune Imperium, anyway. I mean, I know the original Dune is very popular, too. But Dune Imperium, like, checks, like, all the boxes. It's got, like, the, you know, uh, worker placement. It's got some hand management. And not just hand management, but, you know, deck building, hand management, worker placement, resource movement. Uh, it's, it's a complete package. This game is thematically... All there. It may not, I mean, you don't have to even like, you can just kind of ignore that if you just like games that, you know, I got to go here to do this, do that. And, you know, you're blocking people, you know, you're not always trying to block people, but it, it's competitive. The cool thing about it is, as you're getting spice and turning these things around, there's this combat thing at the end of everything. And so there's little fights on Arrakis, the planet, the dune, desert planet, and there's going to be rewards. And so when you, um, at the end, whoever wins the combat gets the rewards on it. The further the rounds get, the more cool the rewards become. And so you're like, whoa, some of them just come up straight victory point. And you're like, oh, what's the big deal? Victory point. Well, the first person to basically like 10 victory points wins the game. So victory points are incredibly powerful. And so getting those, and, and it's one of those games that's very cool. Like you can get cards to say, uh, these entry cards that say, oh, at the end of the game, you know, like, because that'll end the game, right? Like someone has at the end of a round when someone scored at least like so many victory points that you're playing to. But people might have entry cards that are extra objectives to say, oh, by the way, I had this. And it says if I had 10 spice at the end of the game, I get an extra victory point or so on and so forth. So not only in a single turn, sometimes can you see someone bump up two or three victory points near the end, like, whoa, where do they come from? But after the game as all you know kind of ended someone had that in their you know their hip pocket going by the way you thought you had it but i had two extra victory points based upon this really really good game dune imperium the newest highest fastest climber on my list um it actually made what i call my perfect tens so like this game and my number one game are games that i do rate a 10 um 
I just love them so much. If you get a chance, please play do and impair them. And don't be fooled. It is, it is probably more like 75% worker placement, 25% deck building. People get caught too much up into the deck building. Some of the expansions do encourage that more, but it's easy to caught up. If you think it's a deck builder, people go, oh, it's worker placement, deck builder. Well, it's more like 25% deck builder. That's the important thing in worker placement, which is the most important thing in this game. All right, play it. It's just good. And what's the very best game in the universe? Of course, on my shelf, I think it's right there, is Cry Havoc. This is my favorite sci-fi game. It's area control. It's got the great combat at the end, one of the most unique combat systems. Basically, there's this home world that's filled with trogs, and you're playing one of three um, races trying to get the, the precious minerals or the gems um, off the planet. And it uses only cards to move your people around. So, like, the number of cards you play, if you play matching symbols on it, they may have secondary powers. But if you're playing it for the top part, it'll say, okay, I'm going to play these three cards out of my hand because they have three arrows. That means I can move three unit spaces on the board. And that's how movement works. Or it might have the structure symbol. So, I'm like, okay, I'm going to construct this here. And the structure symbol also means you can activate structures, which have special powers. So, it's all about trying to fight this planet with their indigenous species. By the way, if a fourth pair plays, they will play the rules, have it set up where they can play the trogs if they want to. And trogs can be pretty powerful, so maybe the newer players should play the trogs. Maybe not. I don't know. The most straightforward races, like the rangers or whatever they call them, and the, the human-looking people. Um, but basically, you got machines, humans, uh, the trogs, and then these aliens with four arms that are kind of like what I like to call the Euro people because they're all about kind of huddling turtling in more. I mean, they, they, they do combat and stuff, but they got to be more selective because they score better points by hoarding gems and getting more, more points off of doing tricks like that. But it is one of the most fantastic combat systems. Let me tell you about it. Basically, it's just a board, and on this board, there's three areas. So, like, during my move turn, let's say it was my turn, and I'm at the end of my turn, once I'm done with my action, I, I will look and I will say, hey, you know, I, I moved here, here, and here, and I'll have to put a combat number on it. And when they resolve to the number of combat, so it's like I'm in a conflict with you, I'm in a conflict with the trogs. If I'm in the conflict with the trogs, the player to my left will resolve what the trogs do, you know, which is fine. But basically, the, the, the whole thing of the board is there's three areas. It will be like majority control, and then there'll be in the middle section, it'll say um, capture prisoners, uh, and then the third one will say um, uh, attrition. So basically... You'll have so many units, you know, probably anywhere from, you know, one to maybe five units. And as the attacking player, I'll put mine on one side of the board. It actually shows you like the attack. It doesn't really matter. But I mean, you should say, and it tells you everything on the card on the side. It says, this is what happens, how you resolve it. So smooth. So it's like, I'll put three characters here under trying to control it, majority control. Then I'll put two down to attrition and one for capture prisoners. Now the defending player will place, maybe they have three defenders, and they'll put one in each area, or they'll maybe they'll lump up over here under capture prisoner. I don't know. So whoever wins the first one, and if it's a majority control, the defender wins ties. So you have to make sure that you have more in that area. Now, of course, each player gets to play a card back and forth, whatever. Okay. But anyway, once everything is resolved about trying to figure this out, majority control is worth two victory points, and the loser has to like recede off. The middle one is capture prisoner, so they can capture a prisoner, including anything that hasn't resolved yet. So if this is resolving last on the bottom for attrition, they can actually take one of those. They'll put it in front of them. That'll score them a victory point, and they don't get it back unless during the end phase, that player wants to pay victory points to get that person back. So collecting prisoners in a in a bigger game, like a you know three or four player game, if you can collect enough prisoners, you start getting three or four for you know the the major. Uh, I forgot how many rounds it is, but like three major round rounds or five that you get, you can start multiplying victory points by holding prisoners. The last one is called attrition. So this just lets you outright kill people. So that means like if I have two here, he has one here and that can even be, so like they'll just kill as many as possible and you get a victory point for each person you kill. They'll go to the reserve and um, which is kind of a pain in the butt because once you have a person that's killed, you know, at least retreating, you're still on the board. But if you're, 
you know, being killed, you have to go, you have to be like, you have to, on the cards, instead of movement or using a structure, you might say, hey, I've got to use um, my recruit symbol. And that means putting people into your headquarters and then you're kind of moving them out again. So it's kind of a, but everything's not that far away, but it, you know, it can be a pretty big deal if you start losing too many, too many characters, but smooth, elegant, beautiful combat system. I love the board. All the components are fantastic for it. It is by far my favorite, or I should say, it's just the best game in the universe of the universe. And if you disagree with me, write down in the comments below. There's a lot of great games like TI4 could have made my list, but I just don't want to put in five plus hours anymore to, to play that just for, especially a game at the end where somebody can side victory points or they, or they get burned out and like, okay, I'll just make a favor and give you a victory point. And they win the game. They shouldn't be players like that playing that way, but that does happen. But I just, I'm, you know, if TI4 played in an hour, it'd probably be on this list. But I just can't. But there's great games out there. Let me know what games I missed and what games that you love. Until next time, I'm E.T. here at the Dice Matrix, and keep your dice rolling.